Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Welcome back to the last lap podcast post Austrian Grand Prix edition 2023. After what was, I think, a pretty good race. I enjoyed it. And we were, of course, here as always. Niran. Hello. Sorry, I'm munching at the moment. This is a mukbang. <laughs> Carry on. You're a hungry boy. Yep. Kira. Hello. Aldas. Thank you for staying. Thank you for joining for the podcast. How are we doing? You've locked us in. Uh, yeah. Next question. No. <laughs> I neither confirm nor deny. No, very good. That was, um, that, I thought that was actually a, a pretty good race. I mean, we always knew who the winner was going to be. I think that was uh, pretty obvious. But other than that, battles up and down the field. Again, I think the entire weekend has been really, really good. Wanna, Oscar wanna, always delivers. Walk back your six out of ten you gave it at the end of the live stream. I had to reevaluate that. I was in the moment. I was just. I was just. Uh, oh, I was not a max cynical one again. You know, blah blah blah. And then I thought, actually, no, this is a good race. I think like a seven out of ten. I think I'm, I'm happy there. Yeah, I think I agree there. Seven out of ten. I think it was good. Normally. I will fall asleep. I won't confess. Mm. Uh, but actually, stayed awake. It was quite good. There was a lot of battles going on. We saw that battle at the end for P16, oh, which I think classic. was quite good. Yeah, um, track limits was a big thing as well. I think if there wasn't the track limits, it might have been a little bit, but we always had that going on. So there was always something to keep us in the loop. So yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed it. <coughs> That would have been jokes if you just looked over and you're just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great content. Because there's been a few happen. snores fixed. Oh, honestly, I'm not joking fair. you. At, at the actual Spanish Grand Prix when I was there, I was falling asleep. Yeah. Oh, oh, I fell yeah. asleep at the Hungarian Grand Prix once. Yeah. Yeah, like actually at the race. Like, yeah. How do you even do that? Jeez. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. It happens. That you would definitely do that. Are you joking? You no, 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 no. Like, we, were, we were in Austria literally today and yesterday for the sprint. I was not falling asleep. I was... I was fully awake. Trust me. Impossible to fall asleep during that sprint. Oh, it was yeah. brilliant. It was brilliant. It might have been one of the best sprints ever. As in like, <laughs> second best with well, Brazil. I think, yeah, as, as yeah. a total weekend, this definitely delivered. And again, like you said, Al, that's me and you went, we were there on Friday and Saturday. So we got a bit of that experience as well. And I think from a fan point of view, we were saying this, you know, the value for money you get as a, as a fan going on a Friday mm -hmm. and seeing one practice session and then qualifying, it really, like I've been to Friday practice sessions before and the feeling you get on a Friday, it just, it feels like the, the weekend has started. It feels mm -hmm. like a Saturday. That, that's the feeling I got anyway. Yeah, I, I was very similar in terms of, uh, this is now the second, I think, sprint weekend that we've both been to. We were at the first one ever in 2021 Silverstone and whatever you want to say off track and, you know, people have their opinions of the sprint format. Does it need to change a little bit? You know, is it right? Um, does it fit into Formula One? How many should we have? Or, you know, people are asking all of these questions and, as someone like when you're actually paying and going to the track to watch it, I think it's a it's a better experience and you get more for your money during a sprint mm. weekend. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong, I, the format, is it right in terms of like the qualifying for the race being on the Friday, then there's like a separate day that feels a bit disjointed on the Saturday, that's just for the sprint. You know, maybe those can be tidied up and changed and experimented. But again, as a fan, when you go there, you get more for your money. And so I was, you know, I was super happy. Again, we, it's a bit of a strange setup because we were, again, like you said, only there for the Friday and Saturday, woke up on the Sunday and came here for the last <laughs> lap back to the UK <laughs> to watch the race. But, but I don't feel I missed out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We saw a race. Yeah, we saw worldwide yeah we saw practice we saw a bit of f2 and f3 as well because you know yeah. they were at that uh, same race and we saw a race yesterday as well so we kind of yeah i feel like i haven't, I haven't missed out so yeah definitely uh, i think it's for the fan i think it's good watching Kira, what, what do you think about the the sprint format do you do you like because i it does definitely split opinion still yeah quite, quite firmly um it's a really difficult one I'm, I'm always normally i have an opinion and i'm normally like on but i am on the fence with it I, it's like it is good it is enjoyable like, it is really good but then is it needed is I think the main thing that people are kind of questioning is it actually needed but it is fun but then like sometimes you can get sprint races and they're awful and you think oh my god I never want to do this feet. again yeah and then it's like <laughs> stunk we're not doing it again <laughs> but then you have another one it's like well this is the best thing ever but I do think like you said in terms of the fan experience you know you're not sitting Fridays are good I always enjoy a Friday at Grand Prix but you are then watching so many practice sessions and it's all the same whereas if you do have this format I think if you were to go it would be pretty good but I don't know actually watch him how much it adds but it's different i don't mind doing it i've always said i don't mind doing it when they sprinkle them here and there but i wouldn't like it mm. to take over every race i definitely yeah i don't think it should be the norm because i feel like it is quite cool i actually completely forgot for a, when we uh, went to austria that oh yeah wait it is a sprint isn't it mm -hmm. and it kind of that that it kind of made the weekend a bit more exciting so i definitely think there should be a cap in terms of how many they have although you know, it depends. I think they do make perhaps a little bit more money than some of the other races. So it's one of those where all of the race venues are going to want to spring. I think it's yeah, it's, it, it's annoying though because it is that novelty value of just like, 
oh cool guys we've got actually got a sprint this weekend and it's like eight is it eight times a season or is it six this season it's six this year six this season like it's it's sprinkled like quite lightly across the season whereas i think if it was every time but it's got to be at the right track and that's the weird thing in terms of i'm sure all of the tracks would love to have a sprint but f1 almost needs to kind of realize right you might want to sprint and you might make a lot of money but it just won't work it, you know it'd be boring on your track so that's why it's a bit of a weird one for formula one they need to kind of know which are the good tracks for sprints and actually do, do them there inst instead yeah. of just handing them out to anyone that wants to do it we had a was there was a sprint at imola wasn't there like was it last year mm -hmm. yeah or was it the year before yeah. it was it was just not a sprint <laughs> like you can't overtake there do you know what i mean like imagine imola having a sprint so anyway yeah yeah, yeah 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 imagine having a sprint at monaco <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing sprint about that. No, <laughs> no you, get, you no could chance. jog faster. Yeah. Just kick a hole in the bottom of your car and run. <laughs> and take, easy. Um, that, that's the thing. Like the sprint was, it was good. It was helped by the fact that <laughs> Miran was opening his can of. That was not quite. What you, what's, what's that? What is that? It's, um, it's, it's a Brazilian un, unnamed drink. So oh. Sponsored by them. There you go. The, the nearest shop was an off license that's Brazilian. That's As you all do. Like, try it. Try it. I want to. I've already had it before. I want to oh. review. I want to like said this review. was a mukbang, so yeah. Yeah, I want to review. Come on, audio only. Get the mm, ooh, mm. bit of fizz. A lot of bubbling and stuff. It tastes like. Mm. It's kind of like Dr. Pepper. It's, like, it's cherry. Dr. Like Pepper? Cherry. It's a cherry. Oh, cherry, cherry Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Cherry-ish yeah. ting. Yeah. Interesting. You don't sound very impressed. Would to recommend. I'm not going to lie. Oh, okay. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, would recommend. <laughs> but back to sprints anyway. Um, sprints worked. Again, this track it worked. Helped with the changeable weather as well. We were, again, we were sat at turn three and the drizzle was there and it was kind of on and off, obviously dry towards the end. But something we didn't talk about on the live stream, but I wanted to talk about is this Verstappen Perez scuffle at the start of mm. uh the sprint race because mm. it was like it was as you would say box office right box office entertainment so watch it was it was great like Checo got the move done on the inside of turn one then squeeze max onto the grass no question whether there was the intent that's more up for debate and then max gave Checo no room turn three or four yeah um what do we make of that? Because it was all kind of, you know, they, they kind of settled it. Obviously, Max wasn't happy in the moment, kind of understandably, and they had their discussion. Checo was like, I didn't see you because of the spray. I mean, I asked you guys before we started the stream, when we were talking about it, do you reckon Checo saw him? Yeah. 100%. Yes. <laughs> you can see his onboard. No, in his, so again, he, he gets a decent start, overtakes Max into turn one. And so, you know, Max is behind him. Max tries to then, you know, overtake Max him. gets a run on him. Max yeah. gets a run on him. And you can see Checo look in his mirror. One, yeah. two. He's obviously, he knows uh, like Max is there. It's also a bit weird because that's where the racing line goes. It kind of, in that in, in that straight, you go from the right-hand side of the track to the left. So, you know, Checo is on the racing line, but it was an aggressive move to squeeze your teammate as well. But and Max was almost, like, he was like, 80% alongside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was on the grass, grass. In the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. He had to fully back out. Of I basically. just don't even think it's a question of whether he saw him or not because it's a race start. Of course, you're looking in your mirrors. Like, you're always mm. looking in your yeah. mirror. Yeah. yeah. And of like, course, someone's going to be there. Yeah. Like, you've just overtaken mm -hmm. him. Like, yeah. you've literally and, just overtaken him. And Checo knows he's taken a compromised line through one. So he's not yeah. going to be able to carry the speed of a car that has say even if it's not max another car might have been able to take a clean line through turn one yeah because he don't know what's going on behind him for me right that's the, where sergio perez was was not like the natural natural line so the reason he's gone there is because he knows there's a car there to defend yeah so already you just lose like you kind of lose that argument of oh, but also is it you, you know it, it might have been a little bit over the line maybe it was marginal but he's He's got to do it. I mean, Max has been, I think Max has the edge over him to in wheel to wheel combat. And we saw, I mean, literally about five seconds later, even though Max kind of went on the grass and had to back out, lost a huge amount of momentum, he still was quick enough to dive yeah. bomb Checo. Mate, he was he like, lunged so far back. Exactly. So there's that kind of backwards and forwards between those two. They're both very, I think, I think they're both very aggressive towards each other, even though they're teammates, because both of them came on the radio and then said, you know, what, what is the other one doing? You know, that mm. was way over the line. So there's kind of that. They've got a good, I think, relationship between them, but there's no doubt there's a bit of needle. There's a bit of just something between them. So it's, yeah, I mean, in the end, I don't think Max, I, I think, I don't think Checo even had the pace to really win the sprint. Even if he was still first, I think Max would have overtook him. But mm. Checo needs to fight for himself. He needs to stick up for himself. He needs to, you know, show the team that he's not just going to bend over backwards for Max. And that's, that's what he did, even though it kind of didn't really? work out. But pause. <laughs> but I think pu pu push, if he did see him, then because that like quite easily, if Max doesn't, you know, that could easily have resulted on, you know, even on 
Inters, Max, you know, losing control. You remember Bottas, Russell in, in, in Imola oh, when one driver's kind of trying <laughs> to make... Remind me. And <laughs> you hit the wet stuff and then spear into the side. That could easily have resulted in both those Red Bulls being, being out. So it but was, it didn't, so... <laughs> so so life goes on. Yeah. But it, it was a bit... Not, and, and I think, yeah, to be fair, I mean, Max gave Checo very little room, but he still made the corner. <laughs> he was a bit three. out of control. I, I think with turn three, he was kind of like... Now, he knew what he was doing, though. Yeah, because he was aggrieved and like right, fair enough. Yeah, but the, the dive bomb, I think, was was the aggrievement. Yeah, I think, he, I think once he actually got there, it was yeah, like, it was, <laughs> I'm <laughs> off control. But he um, made the corner and he yeah. made the move stick, so it was all all fair in love and war. Mm. And obviously, Max won in the end. A bit of argy yes, what a we bit won. Bit of argy barge, and then into the race. And again, the race, you know. It, we, get, we get to this stage because Max is so good in that Red Bull. You know, that combination is amazing. And we kind of talked about other drivers, but we were saying about Lando. I wanted to briefly touch on Lando as well. Mm -hmm. Lando and the McLaren, not just his performance because he's good around um, the Red Bull ring. We know this, but, you know, he was right up there with, with Carlos. Like, mm -hmm. Carlos. These, <laughs> Lamos, <laughs> these upgrades, <laughs> not on Oscar's car this weekend, P19. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but Lando 18. had them. 18, yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah, um, yeah. Quality, surely. I mean, McLaren fans, Papayan's got to be happy. <laughs> Has to be, surely. Like, you know. That, it's, that, yeah. This was a big one for them um, because McLaren have been in the mud for like a few years now. Mm -hmm. And I think Lando's probably, I mean, Lando is definitely in the back of his mind thinking, is this where I'm going to be long term? You know, I, they keep promising. All, obviously, there was a big kind of restructure. They, they brought in a Rob Marshall from Red Bull. Uh, James Key obviously left the team. And this, cause this is kind of the first proper, this is the first kind of proper upgrades from that brand new structure. So they it had to kind of, you know, they had to deliver or at least show that they're, they're improving the car because it's, it's weird because I think they still have the opportunity to beat Alpine and the constructors, although it's going to be quite difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you have Lando Norris, who I think is probably, apart from kind of the big teams up at the front of the top four, I think he's the best driver in that midfield. He's, he's that X factor that McLaren have. But are they going to keep hold of him if they don't give him the car? So this was a big weekend. We know he goes well around Austria. I think definitely a uh, podium in 2021. Some great uh, qualifying laps, I think, as well. He was on the front row maybe with Max uh, in 2021 as well. So he's, he's a bit of a specialist here. But the upgrades also worked. He was quick in the sprint. He was quick in the race. And it was this was just... It just is a bit of a tease in terms of what this guy could do in a much better car, like put him in a Ferrari. You know, is he fighting for maybe, you know, with, with, uh, with um, Charles for, for P2? I think that's, that's what kind of annoys me about the fact that the McLaren just... Yeah, are they going to deliver? Are they not? It's that kind of question, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it's, got, it's got to give him some confidence, right? I think so. I think it gives McLaren confidence. I think when you can actively compare your new upgrades <laughs> to your old upgrades mm -hmm. in the same race, sorry, mm. yeah. bring it up again. <laughs> 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 but once Oscar, I mean, you know, I'm an Oscar fan, but I think we can all look and think he has, he is a good driver, Oscar Piastri, and I think once he does, then get them upgrades that. Lando has I think that's a really good package for McLaren I, I still think their driver lineup is really good and I think Oscar put some moves it. in that sprint race yeah he was so unlucky in the race as well with yeah. um, front yeah. wing the Magnussen front wing thing oh definitely so I think that you know once once obviously they now know right great these upgrades are good put it on Oscar's car then they can start like you say fighting with Alpine and getting up there and I think they'll really win that fight probably to to Mercedes I reckon well I think I think it's important that McLaren close that gap by the end yeah. of the year to give Lando the confidence that okay this is the team that can because yeah. I think if, if McLaren is still adrift at the start of next season he has to look elsewhere got, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. I think next season the last one because like like Kira said they definitely have the driver lineup. I think Oscar's been really impressive as a rookie when you mm. when you look at the struggles that both Sargent and De Vries have had on yeah, Oscar yeah. Mm -hmm. especially when you compare I think he's arguably got the, the most difficult teammate out of the three so I think yep. he's compared really well I know the qualifying deficit or the qualifying head-to-head -head isn't quite it doesn't look that great but I think relative last year or the last two years there's been so much talk about McLaren or about their driver lineup or how's Ricardo doing how how much he's holding them back I don't feel like there's been much talk about oh look how much Oscar Piastri is holding back McLaren I feel like mm. he's done a really good job so mm. I think they've got the driver lineup to kind of challenge Alpine it's just about it's just about the car yeah. and this was also I think this was only 50% of their upgrades as well or something yes. like that so. yeah they've got like a, that B spec they're talking about this Austria upgrade was 50%. There's now two smaller upgrades coming for Britain and Hungary, I believe. And then Very it will be the full then. B spec car by the end. I mean, look, listen, if that was just half of the upgrades and they're winning, had, they're winning the whole championship. They're winning. <laughs> they're winning the constructors. <laughs> Red Bull, probably about no 300 longer. points off Red Bull already, <laughs> but. They will close that deficit by Spa. <laughs> <laughs> McLaren in the second, McLaren in the, in the uh, second half of the season. We're going for a title charge. <laughs> We're going for a title charge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Zach Brown. <laughs> 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 the band aid. Yeah. <laughs> there has been say, all day. Shout out to those uh, who uh, got that reference, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that Andrew, well, not that Andrew Tate. Oh, but what's the same isn't it? Oh, my. The United Andy Tate. The OG Andrew Tate. No, the, my Andy Tate. 
And there's another driver, obviously. I know you're, a, as well as being a fan of Piastri, Kira. Mm-hmm. We have to go on De Vries' watch. I think he is the driver who is under the most pressure and scrutiny yeah. in F1 right now. I think so. And this wasn't a particularly great performance again. Um, yes, he finished ahead of Yuki and Yuki got about 15,000 hours of time penalties mm-hmm. because he was just on a mad one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, De Vries pushed Magnussen off, clear penalty and just, you know, qualified stone dead last, didn't he, on a, on Friday? I oh, did. Had an all right sprint race, mm. but it's still not great, is it? Over to you. Oh, <laughs> it's not, it's not. I mean, I said this on the, on the live stream, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to defend him, but, you know, we can look and we can see this Alfa Tauri car is not good this year. It's not a good car. It does reek, to be fair. It's really not going great. And, you know, if you haven't got the car behind you, what more can you do? You know, obviously compared to Yuki, he's not having a great show. He's not doing a good job. But I just feel like if you were to give him a bit more of a package underneath him, I do, he has he has the speed, he has the potential. He's shown that in every other category. I know sometimes, I think, I always take Stoffel van Dorn as an example. Stoffel is somebody <coughs> that will compete really lovely in every other series. And mm. then when he was in F1, he just... Nothing up. Yeah, because he was in that terrible was, McLaren. But he was alongside but Alonso as well. That, yeah. This is the thing. Mm. So, you know, it's always, it's always situation dependent I think yeah, a lot of yeah, drivers right. with their yeah. careers and how they go in Formula 1 is dependent on the teammate the car and that's why a lot of drivers when they do f- fall out of F1 or you know go to something else then shine because it's just mm. a different environment a different maybe environment, and I do, think situation. Stoffel, I do think Stoffel actually is one of those drivers where I actually wish he got another chance in Formula 1 because he's been really yeah. good in Formula E and yeah it's, it's difficult and then it doesn't help when again Helmut Marco comes out with those comments like, yeah, I was actually wrong because uh, Christian, no, Christian Horner was right. Maybe we shouldn't have got like yeah. De Vries. That doesn't help as well. So you're driving a bad car. You had a horrible start of the season. The thing is, at the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, you know, just bashing on De Vries. But now I'm just like, may the guy is just like, it's just like left, right and center. Everything's against him. You know, the world's look kind of, kind of, the, the ground underneath is just caving in. And it's like, F1's all, and always be. <laughs> it's always been a pressure cooker, but now there's more eyeballs and like no. expectation than ever and more money than ever. Yeah. And like Red Bull, that team, they're it's not. Red Bull, isn't it? I think that's the worst to, place for you to come in. Christian and Helmut aren't like, they're not arm around shoulder no. kind of management. They're like gun to head. No, no, yeah, no yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are arm round, but it's like headlock. Uh, right yeah, yeah. Headlock, yeah. 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 yeah, you think you're getting <laughs> a half. <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. it's just TKO on the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's um Look, I, I, I think there's been obviously discussion um, about options. Ultimately, I think he's got. He's got to do something in these next three before yeah. the mid-season break. Because yeah. the mid-season break is, you know, that's when Gasly was dropped, wasn't yeah. he, for Albon after mm-hmm. Hungary? Yeah. Um, in 2019? Probably. And it kind of makes sense because it gives a bit of time for the, and the new driver to climatise. Also, so apart from the pressure, apart from Helmut Marko, apart from the bad car, he's also got Daniel Ricciardo very mm-hmm. clearly like... And he's trying to angle, exactly. Mm. Hello, I'm, you know, just always there at the window, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know he's got a big smile. Yeah. Exactly. He's got the and biggest I'm, smile of the morning. And I know De Vries absolutely hates that stupid grin. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he so wacky, and but again, he's, yeah. Ricardo perhaps is looking for a way, not, not into Alpha Tari necessarily, but to prove to Red Bull that he's still got it. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with the Checo situation. There's obviously pressure on him as well. So Ricardo could be looking for a way to, to prove himself in that Alpha Tower. Yeah. So yeah. Franz Tost has been, I haven't got the exact quote, but something along the line of the if a driver was to replace Nick it wouldn't they would they'd only give give it to Ricardo if one of the juniors isn't ready essentially mm. that's kind of yeah he said Alpha Tauri is the junior team for yeah. young talent but if the talent is not but ready uh, then they'll look at but, but also I think, Franz, ready, I think Liam is very much ready yeah. Yeah. but Franz Toss wanted Schumacher so how much say does he actually have I don't think he does because he's leaving at the end of the year so realistically that you've got well. no yeah, say yeah, yeah that as well you've got nothing yeah so like <laughs> Sean was like shut up <laughs> shut up shut <laughs> we'll do what we want at the end of the day sacked right? or you're out in summer but another thing I wanted to talk not so much about the drivers but also just that team generally because Red Bull have said they're dropping the Afatari name at the end of the, that's all but that was another um, Marco yeah. playing like, I just, yeah, yeah. just mentioned oh, it by the way. yeah that's, that's actually a point by the way that, yeah. that was no, there was like no sort of like press release <laughs> no. of that it was just like yeah anyway it's all in this next podcast <laughs> <laughs> he, he'd mentioned I think thinking about it like earlier in the year maybe a few months ago but like yeah he pretty much confirmed it on just, he does this all the time yeah he'll he just, just things. chat well, because there's no one above him. Like he's, yeah, he, he always says, like, "Oh, I can't believe anyone's allowed." Like, no, no, he's he's the top. Well, yeah. He's the so, top of the tree. So, judge it. Like, if there's not going to be the Alpha Tower name on the grid, what would we like that name 
to be. Yeah. It's going to be something, it's going to be something internally with them to promote. They're not going to be, like, it's going to be Red something Bull the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. something like that. <laughs> Tropical? To be fair, I remember, in great it, flavor to be fair. It is. Um, I remember Tomo did a, obviously his uh, kind of pre-race uh, chin wag. I, mm. What did someone say? Like Beta Tauri or something? Beta <laughs> like, Tauri. Like there were some good names in there, but you, you're right. They have to like advertise something. And what are Red Bull, apart from their clothing brand, what are they going to advertise? I mean, that partnership with Gives Ford, maybe, I don't know, like perhaps that Ford could be like a title sponsor, yeah. you know, to kind of yeah. like butter them up before they come in. I like, th- I just, it's I, difficult. I, I think we should just go down the route of saying Red Bull, but in different languages again. Yeah. Because oh, we works. had obviously yeah. Toro Rosso, Alpha Tauri is not, but mm-hmm. you know, we've got Red Bull. We'll just what's, bring it what's back Red, again. What's Red Bull in a Japanese though? I, I wonder, can we get like a rough translation mm, of that? Yeah. Oh, I like All that. Right. Mm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, so uh, I've, I'm looking now and you know, Red Bull in terms of subsidiaries and other companies, obviously they own Alpha Tauri. Yeah. Outside of just the Red Bull brand, there's not too much like, obviously they've, you know, a lot of football teams like New York Red Bulls, Leipzig, uh, Salzburg. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to get him in the car. Red Bull Records, like a record label. I yeah. think, uh, I, oh, yeah. but it could be something that hasn't came out yet and that's why they're kind of teeing it up and that is maybe, maybe. a new thing that they're, you maybe. Know, Bring it on to the Red Bull. That would make, I mean, that would make a splash. But again, it's just, why? I, I don't get the name change. I don't, yeah, but it's all marketing. This The, the sport is marketing. Yes. But when you but when you have that a Formula team One team, like yeah. it was a big, <laughs> yeah. it was a big thing to rename the team. Like, you have to stick with your brand identity. Like, is the last lap going to, like, reinvent itself you well, know, tomorrow and have a different name? Lap. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it, no, but this is exactly the point, like, what you say, Kira. Like, it's marketing. The, the whole point of them yeah. being in sport is marketing. So if they're not going to push a business, Alpha Tari, which, I mean, we went to the one in Vienna and it was empty. That <laughs> Yeah, we were the only ones. There's one in London as well, no? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've never seen someone so they've, they've, Never. They've got a... They've got a business there that that could do with marketing, right? And and can value marketing. So there must be... Like, it it makes no sense to me for them to take the Alpha Tari name off and just put Toro Rosso back on. Because... Yeah, that makes no, no sense. No, but haven't they said love? they're not going to do that? Well... I don't know if they've confirmed mm, that. Someone opened their mouth. Well, someone asked Yuki and he was like, oh, I'd like Toro Rosso. Because oh, really? I think it's like my go. Cool. But I mean, it'd be cool to That's see as a fan. Why yeah. But from a marketing point of view, it wouldn't make any sense. No. Because right? I mean, they've no, got a car at the front anyway. Yeah. I think there's something lined up. I there don't, might, surely yeah Ma- because, maybe that's where maybe the Ford thing does make sense yeah the Ford thing could come in and, and change something but you just don't know what it's going to be yeah. I think it's something that might come out later or oh, RB Leipzig RB Leipzig, Leipzig. yeah <laughs> That would Minardi. Yeah. Go back. <laughs> yeah. Go back. Fuck it with. Well, yeah, because that Bull team then. has changed so much over the years. It's just natural for it. Yeah. It's like, well, hang on, too many years now. We need to change name. Mm. Yeah, true. So they get on. bored in the boardroom. And also, yeah. okay, well, get, like, get a new name, or whatever, and actually stick with it for more than, what is it, four years? 2020 was like the yeah, first. Toro Rosso was the name for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, since the, they bought it, like, they bought Minardi, I think, back in like 2005 or something, and then they renamed it Toro Rosso, and it was always the junior team. Mm. Mm. So they only renamed Alpha Tari because, like, the clothing brand got really big, but. Clearly, a uh, Red Bull drip doesn't sell. We saw that firsthand. Mm, it's Red just Bull too drip. too expensive. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. the thing. It was like 112 euros for a shirt. Oh, fuck but that. I mean, the, their new stuff was rubbish. But like when they first, <laughs> no, they, they, it, it was genuinely terrible. I, 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 their stuff now is like it's all right, but again, it, yeah. it's expensive. The thing is, Red Bull got a lot of money to throw about. They they own the Red Bull ring. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, that's yeah. kind of uh, a, a big push. That I mean, it's it's Red Bull everywhere. How much was that schnitzel? That you had to. Oh my oh. god! Twenty-four so euros. A schnitzel, I hate to remind you because the schnitzel, schnitzel burger. I was going to say a schnitzel and uh, and chips was twenty-four euros. What a rip If anyone is watching from the Austrian Grand Prix, yeah, you should be track, ashamed. You should be, yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. But, yeah. disgusting. but uh, disgusting. they were good though. The, the schnitzel burgers. <laughs> no, I'm trying the to schnitzel you burgers in. were good. I can't count. Like, the schnitzel burgers were good. Like they were eight out of ten. They were banging. Would well, you pay for it again? Yeah. You got, this man's you got, got too much you got bread. Okay, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, it was so good, he did it twice. Oh. You did like, we need it to, like, that's why we need to walk to the train station. Now, like, <laughs> well, you know, Because well, the, the reason I ask, and I wanted to, to talk in, a little bit about tracks and specifically what tracks we think are underrated because I come away from Austria with a much better impression um, having been there. Now, obviously, it's a, you know, privilege to be able to go to tracks most most f1 fans are never going to be able to go to a track mm-hmm. at the end of the day you know you're so tired into location wise right but mm-hmm. what would you what would you three say are your your most the tracks you consider the highest that you don't think get the respects what, what would mm-hmm. you call the the most underrated track on the grid i love baku yeah i love baku 
Baku's Baku so is good for sick. me. It, just in terms of like, it's so different to everything else. It is. As well. But in terms of, if you were, to, in terms of getting fans there, it's a very difficult track to get to. So, yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. The flight's just and not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's expensive. It's far out. So you don't get, I think if you were to actually be able to pack out Baku, wow. Love it. That's where fine. would you put it? What if I just move the track? Yeah, where, where would you put it? Norwich. Norwich, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. Norwich. Welcome to the Norwich Grand Prix, the Norfolk Grand Prix. Norfolk Grand Prix. Grand Prix. <laughs> Cold. Maybe we're putting King's name, then Martin Brundle yeah. can yeah. bang oh, on about yeah. it. Yeah, and George. And George, they'd yeah, love George, it. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere near me, okay. then I can go. Because yeah, okay. yeah. it's hard to get to. But in Baku, yeah. B- Baku, yeah. I do think Baku does... I think... It's, it's considered a good track, but I think there's still a few detractors. I mean, again, we had a bit of a stinker this year. Yeah. yeah. But, but also it's, it's how much of it, you know, a track could be a good track, but if the regulations are in a bad place, for example, mm. then it can make a, I, I think, because for me, I think Catalonia, that's Ooh. the one for me. I love Catalonia. I think it's a fantastic circuit. And I think, especially with the change they no. made, and it was a, all right, race. It was a good race, to be fair. Yeah, yeah it, was yeah, a decent, it was a decent I, I race. Think, but the problem I is think... that's one race. Like we talked about, you know, Baku. <coughs> the, Baku had like maybe one bad race this year, but there's been so many great ones. Like with Catalonia, it's it's had one good race. Yeah, but that's park. because it's only had one race on the new. That's track true. Layout. That's true. Yeah, but I would say genuinely, Baku has had more good races oh, than yeah. Spain has in like the last <laughs> twenty years, and we only started going to Baku five years ago. Yeah, it's, it's, nah, the, the future of Spain is strong. The future <laughs> of Spain. As long as they don't move it to a Madrid street. The, the, the change, yeah. the, the, the layout change, did help though. I will it's, say it's going to help, and, and I do think with these new regulations where they can follow a bit. I know they're starting to become a bit of an issue with that. Yeah, maybe. But as as the field converges, I do think we're going to see the best version of Catalonia which ha- I think you know so. there's so many different disciplines it's fantastic like yeah. touring cars MotoGP like there's so much proof of concept the junior races are always great around Catalonia yeah like, that's never an issue so I just yeah. think that the track itself I, it lets itself down I, again I've never been but I've heard the organisation is pretty piss poor in Catalonia I, I, I've um, heard I've heard a mixed bag but generally negative I, I mean because Kira you went this year yes. didn't you? so how did you find the experience mm, yeah. it, do you know it, it, comparing I mean I've heard a lot about um, Monza last year wasn't very good in terms of the organisation mm, yeah, I didn't yeah. find the organisation was too bad the only thing was um, the track walk they just shut the doors and they were like, then they didn't tell anyone that you couldn't go through but other than that I don't think it was too bad I think I, sweet even better then it, it, so I, I was happy experience? yeah I was happy I got to my grandstand I will say during uh, the watch along Kira did say she fell asleep during the race so it clearly wasn't <laughs> that much of a banger I would not I, know, I, I, would not I fell asleep in every <laughs> session every se- I don't know why I was so tired there you go I'm so tired. Oh, I always kept falling asleep but if anything it's an overrated track no <laughs> Some but nightmares. like you were talking about the track layout I sat at turn one and most of the overtakes were now in mm. turn one so you can tell that that final change in that final corner is helping yeah. there's a lot going on in turn one so like you said I think if we give it a couple of years with I think, like un- this, I think, I think again it'd be underrated good. I think it's underrated okay it is normally called the because there's a lot though. of yeah there's a lot of yeah. hate for it I think yeah. 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 As, as underrated goes I'd probably say yeah because yeah. it's the least rated come on you okay. two. two two more uh, to be fair, I don't know if this is underrated, but I feel like this track has now absolutely earned its place like as one of the best. And I'd say Austin. I think it's a track that's definitely like, the best one. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That just came out of nowhere. I don't really get it. I Austin don't get that. Is really, like, I think the racing is so good at Austin. And Did you not like the, it, Kira? I don't, it's not one that I'm like in love with. Okay. Austin, it's okay, just Austin. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I don't. I'll I wouldn't say it's a go. It's a bit Frankenstein, isn't it? They, they did just like yeah. look at other tracks, which is not put, yeah. Put stuff together. I, went, I was at Austin last year, and it is actually quite a cool because that that it's got like unique things in terms of like that fucking uphill yeah. turn one is That's absolutely cool. mental. It looks like you're looking at a wall mm. when you when you're at the last corner. It literally looks like it goes up ninety degrees. Mm. It's insane. Um, I think the racing's pretty good there, but it's one of those tracks that it's like, it feels like it was artificially made to make a lot of overtakes because of how yeah. long all the straights are. But is that like That's a bad thing? thing? Like we talk it's not about a bad tra- thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just like sometimes. But it just doesn't know. give me a wow factor in Austin. Like, I don't go, oh, it's Austin next week. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't. I, do. I think it just needs more. <laughs> you do that every week. I, I kind of, I think <laughs> it needs more time. I think that will come in time. Yeah. Because right? it's yeah. only been it's on the calendar since 2012 was the first year, I think. Yeah. So, and I think, by the way, the more like the American races like produce stinkers like Miami, like the, I think the yeah. better Austin is going to look. True. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'd love to go to Austin. I think, I think the fan base in Texas and for that race is much, 
from what I've heard anyway, is, is, is more, would you, would you say is more akin to the, like versus like Miami was super corporate, super yeah. artificial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if it feels Austin's more akin to the European race. Oh yeah, yeah. It was just like American that. fans that were just yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, I actually like Formula more One. Authentic, we'll just go and, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was like maybe like corporate bank. or commercial yeah. because like, you know, it's not like Vegas where here's, here's a six million like, uh, you know, hotel package. Oh yeah. Where you can see like no corners. <laughs> if, if you walk around the Vegas or Miami paddocks, I can guarantee like 40% of the people will just be like in suits walking yeah. around. Yeah. Whereas for, for Austin, it was like bare people just sat on grass banks, just like. I think that's how they set up the Grand Prix as well. Because obviously, especially with Las Vegas, obviously Miami, what we can judge it from, they've got so many areas what they have purposely put for influencers, businessmen, mm. all these people that don't, aren't even watching the race. Probably, the seat's probably the other way. And then yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're not even there for that. So I think that's the thing with Austin. It is very authentic. It just looks like, it just looks like a Grand Prix circuit. You're just I turning just, up. I think it just needs more time to build that, so. that leg. It'll grow on you, Kira. It'll grow okay. on you. Yeah. Guaranteed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's Lewis um, Wins. <laughs> my, mine's not like it, everyone hates it, but it's actually good. It's more like everyone kind of rates it a bit, but I actually think it's like top, top quality in terms of just like those um, classic tracks is Japan. I feel like people don't like, there's obviously like you've got Italy and Belgium and like Silverstone and stuff. Mm. But Japan is like firmly in that category. That, the only thing and is- People don't put it in that at all. Like you've got changeable know. weather, you've got the first sector, you've got the fucking- I layout. don't think it's underrated here, mate. I've, I love Suzuka. Think, like I've, Suzuka, yeah, I want to go there like so it. bad, but it's expensive to get there. But that's, yeah. a, track, that's a bucket list track for sure. Yeah. I think a lot of it is though, because obviously we've had such a growth in Formula One over- you know the pandemic and we won't go into japan yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's decreased kind of how people maybe the interest of it. yeah, 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 yeah. i mean i think we can all remember before covid you think oh my god like you get excited for japan yeah. you love that track and i think because obviously so much has happened since and we haven't really been and it's like you kind of forget yeah. about it and people aren't talking about it as much yeah. maybe i think and it, i think the fans as well make it it's, it's oh, they're, they're, in, the fans on their heads sick, and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, is that another johnny herbert super fan in yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. amazing and i think that all plays into it right it's not you know, the, yeah. the whole event, right? We're talking about the whole event. I think the issue, with, I love Suzuka. I feel like, I love Catalonia. I love Suzuka. I love them as, as tracks. I love them as motor racing tracks. Mm -hmm. yeah, F1 track and motor racing track is, is sometimes a different conversation. But I do think, you know, Suzuka isn't, overtake wise like in modern F1 it's not one that's really oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it's a difficult place to overtake but it's such a challenge for the drivers. In the mm -hmm. same way, it's, no, it's totally different to Monaco, but where it is the 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 G force you're pulling around Suzuka, those mm -hmm. high speed corners, um, how much they thrive off it as well. I think it's this kind of the same in Monaco. And even if you don't get the massive spectacle of overtaking, I do think that it's just such a it's such a different venue. You've got the again the culture of the fans there and all that plays into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I think the weather is huge as well. Now, sometimes, unfortunately... As long as they sort out the drainage. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, was it 2019? We didn't actually have qualifying on the Saturday it because it was rained out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we had the qualifying on the Sunday morning and yeah. then the race as well. So about that, yeah. sometimes that, you know, that can work against you. But like last year, I mean, that was a fantastic race. I remember, you know, Ocon and uh, Hamilton had a really good battle. Uh, Alonso and uh, Vettel that, like, uh, finish at the, uh, at, the, at the flag. So, yeah, I think we can have, like, some really good races there, even when perhaps... Even when maybe, maybe if, if overtaking is not like really easy, but it's just such an amazing, amazing track. And to watch that sector one, those S's would be just incredible, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay, my truly underrated one is China. Wow. Ooh, he's chucked in another one. That's a good one, actually. Because I don't know why that gets so much hate. I think it's like, it's a really of, good track. Those overtake numbers, it's like always, well, when, when it was actually on the calendar properly. I was going to say, is it ever like, coming back? Ah, uh, we'll it's technically, it gets scheduled every year. But yeah. Yeah. And every year they go, bye. So, technically it is, but like, I don't That's know when show. it will ever go back there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's for Joe actually, because he's been in Formula 1 two years and oh, still hasn't experienced it. I don't want to, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's is, insane, isn't it? To me, it took Latifi, I think, three. Yeah, that was a while as well. It's the thing, with the pandemic, you know, with so many amazing tracks we just didn't go to yeah what felt like so long do you really not go to canada for three years i know because yeah, he missed it yeah yeah 2021 yeah, yeah i think yeah that's insane it's weird isn't yeah. it yeah that's wild that's the same thing with china because like i'll be honest i was like we said i can't remember the race a minute ago so i'm but you're right that first corner is so such a good corner yeah, yeah. there's just so many overtakes there it so wasn't really good yeah was, i think the last time we raced there was that the time when verstappen took out vettel or something 
I like that hairpin and he just like punted mm. him and, and Vettel was like what the fuck's going on I don't know Ooh, I think it might have been yeah that was, that was, right. yeah, it was yeah, like 2019 yeah, yeah. So that hairpin that's yeah. that, so that straight is like I forget. who won it in because that was 2018 I think when Verstappen drove into it who won it in 2019 I forget now uh, there's one that oh, I remember where Daniel Ricciardo was all just on a mad one overtaking everyone and I don't know yes. what year that was that yeah, was yeah, 2018 yeah. but I was watching yeah, on Channel yeah. 4 so it was probably a while ago oh my god yeah that was a while ago that was a mini when they had it well let us know if you're watching on YouTube or if you can comment on your preferred podcast platform what you think the most gave the most yeah. compelling argument because I think they're all yeah I think yeah. they all deserve a bit more and just what is the most underrated respect for you. and again the, I think the, yeah. the, the fan experience and all that is very important but I want to yeah. talk a little bit about again and I've mentioned it a few times we were at we were at um, Aust Austria for Friday just Saturday. in case we haven't mentioned it you know just in case yeah um, the reason I wanted to bring that up is because I know particularly you know there was um, last year there were a lot of kind of Austria is a very having been there now is, is a very different experience to almost like any other Grand Prix I've been to where it's you know Silverstone you've got a lot of Lewis fans McLaren fans Aston Martin fans Verstappen fans Leclerc fans mm -hmm. and every Grand Prix I've been to has been a very mixed bag yeah. you get certain preference like in Miami a lot of um, Perez fans because Latin American connection right there's a, a big community there at Austria it is 80 at least 80 percent is max yeah and it's all the orange is max and then most of the red ball which is the navy is also max it is to go to a grand prix that's so like one driver mm. is a different experience yeah yeah go to zandvoort as well <laughs> i mean <sighs> yeah and uh, to be fair some of the some of the fans actually said that the zandvoort is quite ex not only is it expensive but it's difficult to get tickets so actually quite a lot of people, the reason why they go to Austria is because tickets are cheap. It's not that far away for them to drive as well, you know, to support Max. Mm. So it's it's a big one for kind of the Dutchies, but it's a very diff. It was a very interesting experience in terms of going, like you said, going to a race where 80% of the crowd is one driver. Like I was thinking in terms of, you know, again, a, a Silverstone or, or even a Suzuka, again, like there's very diverse fans for every single team, every single driver, whether it's McLaren or, you know, Mercedes or Ferrari. So it was, it was an inter interesting experience, but again, even culturally, like, you know the Dutchies they they like to obviously uh they love camping and stuff and that was kind of a big event for them and there's definitely a lot of like drinking and all that that's a big culture when you go to a race like that and I'd, yeah. I'd imagine like if you go to say Suzuka right. or something <laughs> exactly yeah yeah <laughs> when, when you can fly out but I'd imagine if you go, if you went to Suzuka for example I don't think that would be the case I think the oh. culture is very different so yeah. opposite. but there is maybe a you know I, I, again, there were some things. I'm not going to say it's obviously everyone, but there were a few people that were like, we, we way heard, we've too heard drunk. quite a few stories over those two yeah, days. Yeah. Negative yeah. stories. Like, yeah. what, what would you say the perception, like, especially f speaking from a woman's point of view yeah. as well? Because I think that we, we heard reports last year of some pretty horrific stuff. And I can't say we saw anything in person, right? But again, there's which two of us. Mm. And as much as the reports I heard from last year, having been there, I'm like, yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would have no, I, if I'm looking to go to a Grand Prix, I will base a lot of that on the fans that are there and what I know I'd experience, especially like you said, the stuff that came out from last year. Obviously, I haven't seen anything this year yet. After my Twitter, whatever it is, ban, I've got to reload tomorrow and see what's coming out. Unfortunately, but, yeah, the three of us, uh, <laughs> apart from Tomo, we're uh, what, 600 <coughs> tweets a yeah, day. That's all that's we can see. Yeah, you're our Roman report <laughs> for the, for the exactly. weekend, boss, because that's it. But it, it, it is scary, especially when you see the other experiences that, it's not just women, but you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of discrimination going on at Austria. It does put me off. Cause I always said, I really like Austria as a track and I would love to go, but it really does put me off knowing that that stuff is going on. Mm. And I went, as I said, I went to the Spanish Grand Prix and I was a bit apprehensive there, obviously regarding Fernando Alonso fans. I've not had the best experience sometimes with them as well, but actually that was completely fine. It was more neutral. I think you'd think there was just lots of Aston Martin merch everywhere, but mm. they were really nice. But yeah, I think it, it definitely is a big thing. I think you could ask a lot of women, about it they will all say you know Austria probably isn't on the list because of what you and it's, experience and it's obviously at the same time it's important not to generalize all Verstappen fans oh, yeah. exactly the same like that's I, you know I want to make that clear but there was definitely you could you, even we noticed like there was a lot of like drunk like a lot of drunk people yeah. uh, certainly and, and we only went there on the Friday and the Saturday like you know we heard that on the Sunday it gets like even Let alone right crazy. now yeah exactly yeah so it's just but again it's, it's just really important not to generalize everyone the same but it's just no. one of those things that needs to be kind of I'm not, of course, I think it is, you know, great that one track perhaps has a huge following for just, you know, one driver. I think that's a unique thing about the calendar, but it needs to make sure that, you know, people, the track and Formula One needs to make sure that 
people are being there responsibly and that they're over. and that yeah. they're, exactly mm-hmm. the values that formula one holds are also held by the fans themselves and it's difficult when you have like alcohol mixed into it as well <laughs> i mean there's like stores that only sell beer there so it's 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 a very fine line but formula one needs to make sure that they're yeah. kind of on top of it again the values that formula one hold need to be also upheld by the fans that are going to mm-hmm. the races regardless of who they support because an- another thing that Apparently they had problems last year at the Spanish Grand Prix and this year they banned alcohol being served. Mm. And I think that might be something that they, <clears throat> obviously it's a big thing to do. I think they'd all be annoyed if you went, Yeah, you know, especially yeah. you can't yeah. have yeah. alcohol. Like Heineken, but Heineken stocks would go. Yeah, like, but they had Heineken, anyway. you know, stores and they were just the 0% ones. There's obviously not many yeah. people want if you're mm. like these. I these said that to Tom actually. Bands, I said, you know, it's a, it would be a controversial move, but it what about I think it would yeah. help. Non-alcoholic beer would be the, in Formula One. Like if you're, if you're motor sport, Security would have to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, the, yeah, that is the only thing. Because I can guarantee they'll bring it in. People will just try and bring stuff in, yeah. That yeah. Way. and then you just, and then it's even harder to regulate. Yeah, but I know, guess if, I if, think at then least if you're charging like eight pounds for a beer, most people will go fucking hell, that's a lot, well, like, yeah. and they won't they won't get as much. But I think uh, yeah, I think it would regulate it because not everyone would be so eager to mm. want to try and get it in. But obviously, then you do have that problem. But, but as well, if you're camping as well, you can bring it, can't you? So. I, I think as well, like to acknowledge the, the the positives. I think Austria and and the Red Bull Ring has done an incredible job at facilitating this almost like cult like support of Max. Mm. It's like it's incredible seeing all these these people. And like, you know, you see like groups of, of friends like with matching t-shirts and it's all, and, and there's so many little Max booths there. And there's like certain parts that you can't like us with our tickets, you know, even though we had a grandstand ticket at turn three, we couldn't go into certain sections because they were dedicated for people would book their tickets through for Yeah, and, and So that infield section, I think it's like turn seven where and there's eight, the big Red Bull statue, the yeah. big Red Bull statue. So those are dedicated Max Verstappen, um, uh, stands and actually, um, someone who actually watches our content, Rob, who is a Ferrari fan, who actually was really helpful in terms of he's mm. Austrian, he lives there, so he's been there a few times. He uh, basically said that you can't even buy tickets to that stand. Those tickets are only available to the Max Verstappen website. So I think Max's people have literally bought out two grandstands Crazy. and all of those tickets are only, uh, only and, sold. And you can't just so like this like a waiting list. No. You, just you have to, to, I think you have to actually buy a raffle ticket to even have the That's, chance yeah, yeah. of buying a ticket. So but it's big business. He, so, and it's, and again, it's, it's, it's cool on one side to have this unbelievable support. And when you go there, like there is something magic about seeing so much support mm. for one yeah. drive. You know, it doesn't matter where, you know, where you're from. They're all Max fans pretty much. We had someone from, we met someone from Abu Dhabi who was like a massive uh, mm. a massive Max fan and there is something really special about that so you know it's it, as as with everything it's the minority that let the majority down yeah um, but yeah, it's cool. but it's important to have you know all bases covered but there was uh, there was definitely some magic about you know having like all of the fans after one driver which mm. is quite cool no but he has a grandstand in Abu Dhabi as well there was yeah. a, and he had a yeah. whole section as well yeah. there was this orange section I didn't that even was know even it was before there. the championship win that was, was for 2021 it was crazy yeah it was, it was and it's there. just like and they've got all these flags and it's like he's got because I have them he's gonna have them at every track yeah yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just taken over F1 in a different way that like Lewis did or, or you know, Schumacher did. It's actually quite, yeah, it's actually an interesting point because I, I don't think it's like, obviously you can question like whether, Mac, I mean, for me, Max Verstappen is already in a sort of a hallmark list of great drivers mm-hmm. as it stands sure, already, sure. right? But I don't think there's been a driver, you, you know, you look at like MotoGP and like Valentino Rossi is like the guy and it's like bare yeah. grandstands for him and everyone's got like yellow pyros and shit. Mm. This is like the first time that's actually kind of transcended into Formula One as well, I think. Yeah, I think You've so. always had the fan bases and stuff and you've always had like the most popular drivers like Lewis is a fucking icon in, in the UK. Yeah. I think but worldwide, not, just in general. Yeah, but there's not that you don't fanatical get that push. No. thing. And I don't know whether it's a it's combination just, yeah, of F1 it, becoming I more think, popular now, it's, but also... I think it's his it's his personality, his driving style, it's everything. I think the way the country is just the the way the the entire country just gets behind him is unbelievable. There was kind of like that pent up passion for motorsport. I think yeah. in the Netherlands that was always there. Like they but had a track example. Not been anyone ago. to like deliver it exactly. Right? And once Max came, it was just that's where it all came out. But when you look at say the UK, like there's a huge amount of Lewis fans, but there's a lot of other British drivers. You know Lando and obviously like George as well. Yeah, yeah. Jensen back in the uh, day exactly. As well, and, like, mm. Obviously yeah, Alex so. Albon as well. Huge, huge Albon support, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but it's it, but that's the thing when there's one it's oh, only fine, one yeah. drive of one country <laughs> it's very different and even uh, for example even like the German or you know when Schumacher was racing maybe Senna there was other like German there was other like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Time as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's I, a little I, bit different you've kind of got one generation after another you have exactly, yeah. to battle and then mm. yeah I think yeah. it's the perfect storm right because I asked this question of a few couple people there and I was like what is it about Max you know before he got into the sport in 2015 all of these fanatical Max fans 
like I'm guessing they were you know because a lot of these they're not it's not just young people at all it's like yeah, all it ages is. so it's like I'm guessing you were just like an F1 fan like beforehand but now it's like all in on Max and again it's a perfect storm so that one driver representing because yeah you had like I think Robert Dornbos and there was a few Dutch mm. drivers but no one Is who was towards the top Jos obviously back in the day yeah, yeah. and he was like Jos right was nowhere right so you've got one top driver who's competitive which we know is important it's not enough like we say about an american driver it's not enough that logan's yeah in the sport if if he's fighting at the front then that's going to do yeah. more for the yeah. americanness but also i think that the, the main thing that people said is that you know they feel like max comes across in this is very like this every man style and he's very he's very dutch in the way he comes across i think he's very kind of right. blunt and very um to the point which mm -hmm. i mean having you know i, I went yeah. to when i went to redline last year and i chatted with max's team for verstappen.com and that you know those guys it's like they the way they talk about max is like he's it really feels like he he's kind of one of them there was also it was like one mm -hmm. of the one of one of the boys, for want of a better term, you know, yeah. that kind of how the, the it, that's, it that's comes. It, yeah, that's that. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, like that, that, the that's, that's that, I think that's how the perception is around Max. And, and there was yeah. also someone at the track that was being interviewed over the Tannoy for like some kind of like, you know, there was some presenters or something. And he was actually asked, you know, what is it about Max? And he said, he, you know, he's, the, I think the phrase that he uses, he's one of us. You know, that's mm. that's how they feel uh, with Max. Like he's one of them. So he represents, you know, what, what how they feel. So it's just, yeah, he's, he's not only is he in the prime of his career, he's an amazing racing driver a full stop but he's cultivated this incredible audience and you know fair enough plus the sorry. red bull market machine is unreal I just, yeah. sorry, I just thought of an image of like because obviously cool one of them like he's very dutch and whatever imagine we had a british driver that just came up and was just like yeah i just got ib for every summer yeah 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 i think that is That'll the thing though because i think people connect with lewis i think in a different way yeah i agree you don't Back. feel he's British. Like you don't, I don't feel yeah, that. Yeah. I, don't, I think the support is just as like fanatical. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I just think different. The fa yeah. The it's, it's, of, like, it's probably less of like a relate. Well, it is, well, I suppose it depends on the person actually, because then obviously like for me, I guess it's a lot more relatable, but then also like, he is kind of like the every man in terms of his background and growing up yeah. and stuff and getting into the sport. But I think maybe less in the way that he is now. Yeah. He's very creative. He's very yeah. like sort of outspoken and whatever. Whereas I think Max is just very sort of like, yeah, you could go for a drink with him at the pub. Yeah. I can't imagine going for a drink at a pub with Lewis no. Hamilton. He's just relatable in a different way. Because I think, yeah, your, your character is going to define... Like, it, it'd be like George Russell and his fan base versus, like, imagine like <laughs> me, as an, me as an F1 driver, but like twice as... Like, imagine Danny Dyer as an F1 oh, driver. Oh, yeah. And, and George Russell as an F1 driver, both British, but I think they would cultivate different fan bases i think different mm -hmm. classes as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly when, when niran was talking about the uh you know the ibiza type of f1 driver that was like the opposite of george russell yeah yeah, 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 yeah. literally yeah, yeah, yeah so i think that all kind of play but again i just find it super interesting and again like the red bull marketing machine on top of all that has just like you yeah. would there must be so many i'd never appreciated it until going there just the scale of it it's it's insane. But so when when I went to Zambor last year, um, oh man, of course, yeah, yeah. So obviously, it's you you could imagine like it's that, yeah, just again. Hmm. But it's even more sort of like it's even more saturated. Like I remember seeing one Hass shirt and being like, "How the fuck did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get here? Why are you My here? Guys, lost. Yeah. Always, this guy lost. What's this polar bear doing? There's always a random, a um, random Hass shirt. It, it's so it's so mad. But like even outside of that, you'd see like yeah, a couple Mercedes fans, and they'd get a bit of like jokey grief from like the, the yeah. like, mm -hmm. Verstappen fans, obviously. Couple of Ferrari shirts, but genuinely, it was just orange everywhere. Mm. Just the sea. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think a driver's ever managed that before. No, to be honest. they haven't. Yeah. But it is the marketing as well. And I think Red Bull, not just with Max, but Red Bull just in terms of their own team are very good with their marketing well, in that, every category. Yeah. You know, they're yeah, always doing they do. the next step. They're always, you know, yeah. doing mm. what other teams aren't doing. And that's probably why, because like Lewis has so many fans, but I've never even thought of a Lewis Hamilton grandstand. There's just not a thing that, you know, overly happens. I couldn't imagine loads of Lewis fans just sitting together. It doesn't, it just doesn't, it feels weird, doesn't it? Whereas yeah. if you think of like they're almost Max, out. yeah, they're, they're all just kind of dotted around and there's always loads of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you think of Max, you just think like, Orange, mm. orange, the orange lot. army. Yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes it's just like, you can't necessarily even put a word on it and put a, like explain it. It's just it just happens. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just the way things go. But at the end of the day, what can happen is is 
and and we can as 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 human beings we can have an influence on how it pans out are the the rules and regulations around this sport and i did want to touch on some comments that were made prior to this weekend <laughs> at the start lewis hamilton specifically talking about some changes potentially and i got some headlines because obviously max was like well we weren't saying this when mercedes were leading which they and then were, the they were. Isn't Don's true. working out with the receipts, <laughs> yeah, that was receipts. Say, yeah, that, that, it happens from both sides doesn't but it? regardless i i think ultimately whoever's mouth it whether it comes from lewis or or you know nick de Vries, sorry kira um <laughs> Regardless, do you think do you think what Lewis was suggesting is that <laughs> development on next year's car can't begin until a certain point, so it stops a Red Bull from just you know, chilling with this year's car and, and getting an advantage going into next year by starting earlier. I guess it's a weird one. It's I, I I'm not I understood where Lewis was coming from and I kind of get the point he's making, but. Ultimately, if he was in the dominant car, I'm not sure he'd be saying that. And, and we get this all the like. It's the no, no, no. But regardless, cycle. regardless of that, is it is it a good idea? Because I like whoever I actually, it comes from. I actually from. like it. I like the yeah. idea just purely because I like, want to debate the merit of the idea. It's a difficult one because like if you make a car that's so good, you technically should be allowed that uh, the the. I don't know. I don't know what, what, how to describe it, but you, you've done so well that you, you've made a good car. You should then be allowed to work on a car earlier because of how well you've done. You should be given that opportunity. You've earned that advantage. You've earned that yeah. advantage because of how yeah. good the car was this year, for example. But obviously, I think it would stop or try to temper eras of dominance. And I think that's quite a big thing for Formula One, and quite a big thing for Formula One's image right now. Is yeah. that we've not really had a since '09. We've not had a single period that's had like multiple winners it's been red bull mercedes then back to red bull again mm -hmm. but like long periods of time yeah and i think that would like temper that just a little bit because you can't just go right cool we're three races in yeah we've got this wrapped up let's build the next one like do you know what i'm saying so i think so and i think it's that is the if you look at it plain black and white that is what we're trying to stop we're trying to stop the dominance eras in a way yeah. because so many people are, are complaining about it and obviously you, it's always different because you know when mercedes were dominant <laughs> Yeah, it was like. Oh. It's so ironic, by the way, that it is coming from Lewis. Yeah, like, as much as I love it, it is. it's really ironic it coming is. from him because that is just. It could be something to look into. It may, it may not change things. It may not. But if you just give a cut off point, you know, with the season prior being like, right for next season, you start at this date. Kind of similar to how they're capping like budgets, just cap a date in a way, just cap it at like, this date. You then start. It could do something. It might not even do anything. You just don't know. It's really hard to anything. police, by the way. I was just well. about to say, yeah. how would you even Joe police that? Around like, how would you... Who <laughs> says what, what a new car what is? What the fuck is that for? Is that for this car? Or it? <laughs> yeah, <for every> single, <laughs> exactly. What's the skew? But that's it the thing. Like, quite, uh, that's, how yeah. would you even like... No, for example, so in 2020... Sorry, between 2020 and 2021, Red Bull used like a B chassis. I think it was the RB16 and then RB16B. Yeah. So like, when does the new car start? If you, if you yeah. carry over a chassis and if you carry over the same kind of car, but just upgrade it throughout the season and into the next one and not build a new one how would you even know what the new car is how would you police that who well, knows when the new they car definitely starts find loopholes as well and start putting they things will. on yeah. the current yeah. cars that they want to use next year but they'll just like, say oh, these are just upgrades yeah exactly yeah. So if, if there's a yeah if there's a huge change in regulations it, it's easier to look at components i mean even now they still use certain parts are still being used you know from 2018 19 cars mm. i mean the william steering wheel hasn't changed in about it's never changing years. yeah <laughs> like, I've, I've seen their floor <laughs> <laughs> but but what i'm saying like so like you can't because unless there's a big change of regulations a lot of these cars they're just evolutions they just continue to evolve and so whether you stop like it, that it, it, I just don't think it's ultimately what you're saying, Elders. I don't think it's enforceable at all, and also you don't know how that's gonna. Yes, it might have an effect at the top. It also might have a detrimental effect to everyone else. And you can look at rule changes that, you know, ultimately you can't have a rule change that isolates one team. That is literally against the merit of sport. You have to. You can. You can create rule changes that you think are gonna try and close things up a bit, but ultimately, you know, you could end up really hurting. It's like when they made the floor changes um, to that was aimed at Mercedes. Yeah, but it also they, hurt Racing Point because yeah. they copied the Mercedes, <laughs> oh, so yeah. they got fucked <laughs> by it as well. Um, kind of, they were, you know, and they were obviously pissed because they spent all the time like copying the Mercedes and, and getting it in place, and, and ultimately. Who knows where that car would have been if the floor changes, like 
they were, yeah, like what were the, the quickest car the year before what that. were the 2021 racing point you know would actually or it would have been the aston martin the first what would the first aston martin would be if they didn't have the floor changes so yeah it's so, just so I, I don't i think what lewis was suggesting i don't think it's feasible yeah and even for, like you said for the small team so if you cap it say if you stop development of your kind of current car midway through the season like what about the last half? What about if you're pushing for eight, you know, maybe sixth in the constructors? Because that's huge for the likes of maybe Williams or someone. What about has your need, has through a whole season? I was about, to, I was yeah. literally about to use yeah. the example. So how does that work? You know, do you not do you not develop your car at all for like half a season and just put all your resources for like that second half somehow? Like it's just yeah, it's not only it's difficult to police. It also I think confuses the sport even more. And like mm -hmm. this Formula One is already a pretty confusing sport to like brand new fans. I think a lot of you know there's been a, a huge influx like since Drive to Survive. So. I think just to make it even more confusing for, for fans of the fact that you can't even develop a car, you know, in the second half of the season because it's for next year, but you're not going to be able to see it until six months later. I think it's just too much. It's The sport is already overregulated as it is. Mm -hmm. I think simplification is just, that's the whole point of these regulations right now, isn't it? Like to make it more simple, uh, there isn't, there's more kind of shared components and yeah, it's just, yeah, I get, I think Lewis's, play, uh, Lewis's heart is in the right place and I get where he's coming from to see kind of wanting to see the grid a bit more closer but there's just too many holes in there. if it was possible, it would actually be good, but it's not. Yeah. Like, it's actually just not. If you look yeah, at it, yeah, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, even if you like, not. what, you're going to ban people like whipping out the spreadsheets to crunch the numbers for next season. Like, you genuinely can't numbers. believe that. So, yeah. Yeah. And they always want that. These people that work at these, you know, companies are so clever. They're always yeah, had a loophole. Yeah, yeah. They're, They're cleverer than the people writing the rules. They are. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's what we hear all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Even from people that have worked uh, like within Formula One or within Formula One teams, the teams have more resources than Formula One. Yeah. And people yeah. actually forget that. They have more like, you know, even when it comes to like law, you know, of, of the FIA kind of sets out their rule book, but the teams have like lawyers and like engineers basically looking for holes in there. Yeah. I mean, that's what kind of... It's like Joe Bauer, isn't it? Joe Bauer's like the head, yeah. like technical... Got his work cut out, man. <laughs> so he's always that's having a, a little... That's a tough gig. Yeah. Like yeah. keep it up with like all 10 It's just him though. Like, it's literally always just him. Yeah. Like, Paul, like someone give him some help, man. Someone help him. Get an apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> right. I also want to wrap things up. I want to talk about... Um, the equal machinery section that we 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 sometimes we haven't always done it, have we, Niran? We we typically touch on equal machinery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've we, had a lot to talk about recently. We, there's been we a lot. We don't have time to, to squeeze it. In. There's been a lot, but I wanted to squeeze in a little equal machinery section at the end of this podcast. Scintillating. So the the question, and we're all assigned a driver. Mm -hmm. The question is, who would be the most successful driver replacing Nick DeVries at AlphaTauri? <laughs> So we've all been Here, assigned a driver. Given Nick no. DeVries. Um, Nick you, DeVries will you have Nick DeVries. To, you have to argue the merits of the driver you're given, whether you believe it or not. Okay. Oh, is my driver Max Verstappen? <laughs> no. If oh. I've been given a stinker. Aldas, your driver is Pietro Fittipaldi. <laughs> <laughs> my guy's done two races. Oh, sorry. I'll, 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 Hold it back. I'll wait for my Hold tire. it back. Okay. Right. That's not even the one that's in F2 now, is it? No, that's, that's Enzo. Enzo. <laughs> 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 Kira... <laughs> You have Nicholas Latifi. Oh my God. <laughs> I did not assign this. <laughs> Niran, you have Mick Schumacher. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, okay. And I have got Daniel Ricciardo. Why have you done that what then? What is that? Oh, I mean, wow. good. Yeah, Where is Liam yeah. Lawson and all of this? Post, right, post we just bias. agree that he can't win. Yeah. He has his um, are we doing a minute or 30 seconds per person? Oh, what, what do we think? Oh, I need a little time on it. <laughs> Go on, do oh, 45. I love that in the middle. Got me a little timer on me. Oh, he's got, he's got his Cassio. Oh, Go on, Ed. Wait, Wait, I, don't on, Ed. I don't know how to do it. Oh, he Wait, even makes it. noises and everything. Oh, Jesus Christ, mate. Oh, me to get my yeah, I was going to say. All right, let's, 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 let's I'm embarrassing okay. myself in front of all my friends. I yeah. think I've done it. Okay. Actually, 45 minutes. Yeah. 45. Oh, that's okay. Daniel Ricardo, most successful at Alpha Tauri in 3, 2, 1, go. Alpha. For, for, okay, wrong. Oh, <laughs> well, no, again. no, no. You know what? I'm, I'm you, Ricardo is proven in Red Bull machinery. They know how to get the best out of him. He's been at that team before. He's a marketing guru. He's massive. He would flog. The Alpha Tauri stores would be full in Vienna if Ricardo was in an Alpha Tauri. So they're making plenty of bag. Marketing is the whole point of him being in F1. He proves himself, shows that he's at the capability. They're very happy with him in the simulator right now. They think he's top tier and maybe, maybe. Max Ricardo Red Bull comes back together. I think if he shows that he's got the he's got the facility, then they could make it work I with Ricardo. Yeah. And at the end of the day, right? I think Lawson's great. I think Lawson's done a lot in Super Formula. He wasn't. He finished just ahead of Logan last year in Formula Two. I think there's 
Awas is all right. He's doing well. I don't think there's any Red Bull Junior really shining outside of Lawson. And even Lawson, there are certain questions. Yes, he's DTM champion. But I think Daniel Ricciardo's proven entity. He would do very well. And he would also test Yuki Tsunoda and learn more about Yuki. Done. So your argument was basically he'll put he'll push merch. That's it. <laughs> like he'll push that Avatar was, merch. Marketing is is the point of Formula One. I hear that. Marketing is the point of Alpha Tower. Marketing we'll see how is, Nicholas yeah. Latifi's marketing is going to be in a minute. Um, you're going next, Nero. Okay. All right. Cool. I feel like Mix. Yeah, is, is give these two a bit okay. more time All to right. think. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I have I have I have a thing in my mind. Just tell me when I can go. Three, two, one, go. Now, what is the brand, ladies and gentlemen, of Alpha Tower? We've seen it today. Carnage. <laughs> what does Mick Schumacher offer? Chaos, right? This is a man who was kicked out of Haas for crashing too regularly. Do you understand how much of a great combination it would be to have him and Yuki in the car? If we're talking about branding, a car being on the side of a road, split in half, is going to get on television and that is going to sell shirts, even if they are £112 each. Plus, look, listen, Mick Schumacher, he's got the pedigree and he's been working with Mercedes recently, yeah? In the simulators, okay? He's, he's worked on his pace. He's probably worked on his consistently, consistency a little bit more. Apparently, he's got one of the best work ethics that anyone's ever seen at Mercedes. So for me, personally, combination of the chaos and the actual ability is the reason why he should be the one to replace Nick DeVries. Oh my God. Wow, 55 oh, seconds. Yeah. Oh shit, okay. Oh, is it, oh, do I have a minute? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was 45, all right. Oh, yeah, five. <laughs> so I thought I went over. It. It's it's actually 42 and a half seconds. 42 and a half. That was good. That was, was really good. That was, that was well so, argued. Yeah, thank I you like very that. much. Thank you. Sometimes you've got to knock people down to build them back up again. Uh, the yeah. argument, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. It's all tactics. I Think agree. about it. Kira, Latifi. Yeah. In three, two, one, go. Uh, Nicholas Latifi has so much money, right? <laughs> 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 he can put all his money into it. They can buy out Red Bull, right? Have this whole new team of Alphatari. Name it Nutella FC, but it's not even a football club. It doesn't matter because it's <laughs> racing. And then instead of having Nicholas Latifi, he's going to be like, right, you know what? I'm in the car and I can do what I want. And then he's going to get Yuki Snowda out, yeah. get Lewis Hamilton in, Ooh, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This car is going to be the tits, right? He's getting up there <laughs> every year, every year. Then, because he's got so much money, he's going to buy out the FIA, change all the regulations. Mm -hmm. So it all suits this amazing new Nutella FC car, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then... Only cars that do chocolate spread can win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> spread all over the track, you know, yeah, slippy, <laughs> slidey. And then Nicholas Satifi, alongside Lewis Hamilton, but the car is so much better, really, for Nicholas Satifi. But oh, Lewis is still there. Because skills. It's, yeah. Right. And then Nicholas Satifi turns into an eight-time world champion. Wow. That's it. 55 seconds as well. Thank you. Wow. And it's crunchy around the outside. <laughs> <laughs> That was a different angle. No one, no one's yeah. attached it from nope. the uh, from the financial perspective and this the wide. Uh, I'm I'm all about the. Money. I like this. Yeah, we've we've not we've not we've, yeah, we've facts, always that was thought that, that the driver that might have on the lead. I can't lie. Yeah. But these drivers, the, yeah, they're more than Maca had a massive influence on Ferrari outside of the, the seat itself. Yeah, you know? yeah. they're so, more than just driving. Then Nutella as well. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Okay. Okay. Aldas, that's a that's a tough tough one to follow. Tough but are you ready to argue why Pietro Fittipaldi is the right man for Alfa Tauri? Ready. Go. Well, first of all, I'm glad you are reminding me of his name. I actually forgot it for a second. <laughs> this, this, this is the guy at youth winning championships is what, so, what it's all about. This is the guy that Where's won the about? MRF Challenge 3000 like 2016. That's a oh, that's a big time. That's big time. Big time. You pulled that he came from the first dome. in Formula V8 for 3.5 in 2017. <laughs> banger after banger. And also, by the way, we were talking about plug-in merch. Listen, he's Brazilian, so big crowd out there. Mm. Bigger than bigger than Canada. Bigger than wherever you are. Uh, Germany. Bigger than uh, <laughs> wherever bigger you than are. Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, they love they love some merch in Brazil. So he's gonna get those numbers. He's got that name as well. And also, Daniel Ricardo washed. Schumacher crashes literally every other race. Fairs, yeah. Latifi also crashes literally every single other You're race. Lying. Don't forget Pietro Fittipaldi's time in the limelight. Two race stint when Grosjean unfortunately crashed, you know, and had to take some time out. And he finished both of his two races in Sakir and Abu Dhabi in 2020. Brought the car home in one piece. He's the complete package. He deserves the chance. I don't need any more time than that, really. I gave you an extra two seconds just to finish. I'll, that, be, yeah, I'll be 100% real. I don't remember a single Pietro Fittipaldi uh, 
performance out of those two races. I forgot that happened. I mean, but what I will say, but that's is, kind of good because he didn't have means he was. He didn't yeah, means means he to himself. Yeah, means, I remember all of Schumacher's and uh, Mick Schumacher's. I remember all of Mick Schumacher's and all of Nicholas Latifi's uh, g- uh, races. And let me tell you, they were stinkers. Yeah, look, listen again. For my the, the car was in half. Don't care. I got bread. Ability. Don't care. I got bread. Look, listen. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> don't care. I got bread. It's fine. You know what? As well, him, Pietro, and Enzo can do swap out races, so they can without yeah. anyone realizing. Just you don't know which one's which. Enzo was there. Enzo was all, Get you granddad know, in as well. Junior as well. Yeah, no one's yeah, gonna yeah. know. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, let let us know in the uh, comments slash ratings. Who won? Blah, blah, blah. Who did the best job? Mm-hmm. Um, who you want in the Alpha Tower? I'm, I'm talking about the 2017 MR3000 Le- Le- champion. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> this isn't Chinese Formula Four, bro. <laughs> Legit though. In a word, Lawson. if someone has to replace Devries mid-season, in one word, Lawson. Liam Lawson. That's two. Two words. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, Liam. It was a... Uh... No, it's Lawson. Ricardo. Ooh. Fair enough. That's, that's, who I'd, that's who I'd put in. The merch. <laughs> that's who I'd put in. Ricard, the merch. Ricardo to the end of the year and then Lawson from next year onwards. Give it Ricky to the end of the year. <laughs> um, right. I think we... I think... I think we're... <laughs> Say. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, oh, that, that was fun. Episode. I, 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 it was good. <laughs> and we're back again for, for the British Grand Prix next weekend. British as well. Next weekend. Um, yeah, it is cool. indeed. Um, which goes to that one as well. You're going to that you one might as well. go to that one. I don't, I don't know. If it's next weekend, I you think it's isn't it? <laughs> it's just going to be Kieran on the last lap. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah holding the four. Right. Right. Um, right. Kira, thank you so much for coming no, on. You're welcome. Way. Thank you for having um, me. And where can the lovely people listening and watching find you? Me. So you can find me mainly on Twitch. It is Kira Megan XX. I do F1 watch alongs, football watch alongs, things like that. Um, or I'm over on TikTok as well, Kira Megan F1. Instagram, Kira Megan XX, everywhere. You can also find me on F Series. It is a motorsport content creation group uh, full of five lovely females, and we do TikToks and we are on Twitter and Instagram. It is at F Series underscore underscore. That is a lot easier to do because we just have one app, whereas I have two. Nah. But yeah. You had to complicate it. I know. Got some I almost thought she forgot her socials midway through. I was like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I've got them. <laughs> and what about you, Adas? Where, where where are you? It's all, oh, mate, where am I not? Uh, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Uh, YouTube, obviously, uh, Aldas, <laughs> In uh, Instagram, Twitter, Aldas001. <laughs> yeah, just find me there. <laughs> You'll find him. It. It. it comes up. I when sell you yeah, exactly. A- 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 it will you put A in up. and it comes up. Honestly, yeah, yeah. You put A in, I'll be that. Bang. Top bang straight there. Oh, <laughs> lovely jubbly. That was fun. Mm. I enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, listening wherever you are in the world. Again, don't forget to rate, like, subscribe, five star, wherever. Do it. Do it. It's very nice. We enjoy that. That's <laughs> lovely for us, isn't it? Indeed. Indeed, it is. It, it really is. Truly lovely. It is. Cheers, everyone. Bye. 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 Subscribe. <laughs>